everyone welcome back to the channel i'm back here at team toyota of princeton to check out this brand new 2024 toyota highlander this is the xse all-wheel drive trim in mad magnetic gray metallic is the color with a two-tone black and red soft text interior we're going to check out this highlander see if this is the one to get if the grand highlander is just too big you don't need all that room and the regular highlander is the is uh the right size is this this mid-size three-row suv to get over the competition so let's dig in front end of our highlander xse in magnetic gray metallic looks good we do have gloss black on the grill with the toyota emblem in the center we have led headlights led daytime running lamps standard bulbs for turn signals led fog lamps down below Looking good on the front end. I do like the magnetic gray with the black. Let me know what you think as we come on over to our wheel and tire setup on the XSE. We have a 20 inch gloss black machined aluminum alloy wheel, Toyota badge on the center cap, standard brake and rotor package. Now Toyota is using Bridgestone all season tires around these wheels. 235 on the width of 55 series sidewall 20s, all four corners, all wheel drive, Moving on back, I do like this magnetic gray. We do have flat black around the wheel wells. And, of course, that's going to tie in with your 20-inch wheels. No chrome around the windows. So let me know what you think. Is this too dark? Does it need a little bling? Put it in the comments. We move on in closer. We are gloss black on our side view mirror. LED turn signals. Color match on the front and the rear door handle. Left side fuel filler cap. Up top, we have a roof spoiler coming off the top. Color matched roof with the gloss black roof rails, but flat black on the crossbars. And then we do have a sunroof. Rear end of the Highlander, the roof spoiler coming off the top, the wiper down below on the glass, LED taillights, standard bulbs for turn signals, Highlander on the left side of the tailgate, XSC all wheel drive on the right. Then we're gonna go flat black around the bumper. And then we're going to have that chromed up dual exhaust tips coming out the right side of the vehicle. We are under the hood of our 24 Highlander XSE. And we have a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. 265 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. This vehicle can tow up to 5,000 pounds. MPGs, 21 in the city. 28 on the highway, 24 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. Before we get into the interior, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much am I going to have to pay? These aren't cheap, and you're right, they're not. Base price for the 24 Highlander XSC all-wheel drive is $45,965. Then we have to add in a bunch of options, which we'll go over when we take a look at the window sticker. And then we have to add in destination and delivery of $1,395 from Toyota's Princeton, Indiana assembly plant. We have a total MSRP for this vehicle from the factory of $50,222. So let's check out the interior. Starting with the foot box, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. We have the floor mats in the rear of the vehicle at this time. Seats, we have power seats for the driver and the front passenger, but only the driver gets the power lumbar. Then we're going to go black with red two-tone soft text with light gray stitching on the black and then red stitching on the red insert. Let me know what you think about this combo here on this XSC. We do have a sport trim. So I can see what they're trying to do, but just let me know if you like the colors or if this red's too bright. Door panels, we're going to go soft touch on top. Then we've got brushed aluminum. Then we have the red soft hex on the insert with a nice soft armrest. Flat black on the switch gear. Down below, we have a decent uh, door pocket. And of course, we have the upgraded 11 speaker JBL audio system in here. Up top, we're going to go soft uh, touch, not text, but touch with the red stitching, some faux carbon fiber instead of gloss black plastic. So I like that idea. We do have a nice shelf in here. They can, the passenger can put their phone in, but it's not rubberized. So things may slide around in here. Then we're going to go soft tacks with the red stitching. And then down here, we have a nice large glove box. Infotainment system wise, we have Toyota's 
optional 12.3 inch infotainment system. This does not come standard in the XSE and it's on the uh, window sticker as an option and we'll see that a little bit later. But we do have wireless CarPlay Android Auto. However, the built-in nav is subscription service only. So I imagine most people are going to use their phones for their maps and their nav. We do have our radio where we have our Sirius XM as well as other radio stations. You can Bluetooth your phone. You have your vehicle settings where you can adjust your climate and how you would like that front, rear, or you can go to the back, you get your trip info, or you can get your vehicle alerts. So nice and simple. We have general settings here where you can set up your driver profiles, set up a Wi-Fi hotspot if you want to do that. Vehicle customization, you can customize the lights, have the auto sensitivity on, daytime running lights, all that stuff, door controls and all that stuff in here, climate controls again. So they have some kind of action in here when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now, when we take a look at our backup camera, this is a bit disappointing. It doesn't take up the whole screen. It's the old camera with no trajectory lines at all. So I'm not a fan of that. We're in a $50,000 2024 Toyota with the updated system. It should get the updated camera. As we move on down, we have dual climate control. So I do like that. We have three stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger over there. And you have your controls for the climate, including turning on and off the rear climate if you want. But no ventilated seats because that's what that dead button is for right there. So at $50,000, let me know if you think they should have ventilated seats in this XSE. Now, we do have two more trim levels up from this in the Highlander lineup for 24. You got the Limited and the Platinum, which I'm sure they're going to get introduced there. But should they be introduced on the XSC as well, considering the price of this vehicle? Let me know in the comments. Two heat and air vents, four-way hazards, push-button start, more soft tacks with the red stitching, wireless charging pad right in there. Down below here, we have two USB-Cs and we have a 12 volt and another area to slide your phone in if you would like. Here is the gear shift that's going to take us through the 8-speed automatic with the gator. And then we have two cup holders looking good with the brushed aluminum trim ring or the chrome trim ring, which I do like. And then our key fob, lock, unlock, pop the tailgate, panic button, Toyota badge, and it says Highlander on the back. Down further, we have our drive modes, which we'll check out when we go through the dash. And then over here, you got your electric emergency brake, auto vehicle, hold on or off, hill descent control, snow mode, and traction control off. Then we have a nice center armrest, semi-soft with the stitching. You can open it up just like that and look inside. There's a shelf for storage, some more storage underneath, and a 12-volt. Highlander steering wheel. We got a leather wrap wheel. We have black stitching. Toyota badge on the horn button, some brushed aluminum to lift it up, round bottom wheel. But for me, in my liking, this wheel's too low. I have it in the highest setting, and it's still too low, and my knees are going to hit getting in and out of the vehicle. So either give me a higher setting or flatten this off to make it easier for people to get in and out. Now, on our switch gear, we are flat black, so we have our telephone voice commands volume and controls for the digital portion of our dash. And then on the right side, you're going to have your modes for your infotainment system, seek for your music, adaptive cruise, safety suite controls. Now, over here on the left stock, we're going to have our headlight and fog lamp controls, and on the right, front and rear wiper. Down here, uh, we have our adaptive high beams on off, auto engine stop start on off, pop the tailgate, but no heated steering wheel, and that's a missed opportunity in the car at this price. And then we have our trip odometer and brighten dim the dash up here. Now, when we take a look at our dash, we have that analog digital combo, analog gauges for your speedometer, tachometer, fuel level and coolant temperature, and then we have that seven inch display in the center. Now our drive modes, we're gonna look at, we have sport, we have normal, we have Eco, no action on the dash, just a little green light on top telling you what mode you're in, and that is it. And then, if we turn our 
thing. Now we get some action on there. We got mud and sand, and if we turn it back to the right, we have rock and dirt. Would have been nice to have a display for every drive mode. I don't know why they only did it for this one. You push the button, you go back to normal. So there you have it. And then you also have additional information you can go through with these menu items as you go down the road. So it's nice and easy. If you're looking for your tire pressures, you go to your vehicle, and then that's the all-wheel drive, and then you can go across and you can get your safety and you can get your tire pressures there. So I have a lot of people asking me that when I do the, go through these displays, so I'm trying to show it on every car now. But nice and easy. Overhead console, there's the area for your shades with another camera so you can see all the way, camera, mirror, that you can see all the way into row number three. And then if you want your non-LED lighting, missed opportunity to come on and off when you open and close the door, that button remains on door. Right in the middle, you open the door, lighting comes on, close the door, the lighting dims out. Got to be LED in a $50,000 vehicle. SOS button in case there's an emergency on the road. And here are the controls for your roof. So the shade is manual because we have a standard sunroof. And then we want to open it. We just hit that open button. Open it goes. Wind buffeter comes up. Then if we want to close it, we can close it up. The, the switch over here on the right side is for the tilt function. So you can tilt up or you can tilt down. And then you can just close your shade. Now our sun visor with vanity and a light. Does it slide? Yes. On the driver door panel, I did want to show you something. Here's where the mirrors are. We do not have power fold mirrors on this XSC all-wheel drive. Base price of 50000 I think we should have power fold mirrors and no memory seats. And again, another missed opportunity here on this XSC Highlander. Let's take a look at the mid-row. Getting in the mid-row, before we do that, back door panel, we do have our security shades on both sides, so they got you covered there. Now, getting on in. Flat roof, no problem getting in. Piece of cake. Right, plenty of room for my head, shoulders, and knees at five foot eleven. The soft hex in red all the way down. Seat pocket behind the driver and the front passenger. In the back, we have the rear climate control with two USB Cs, but no mid row heated seats. Let me know if you can get you included. And then <clears throat> the door panel again, same action as the front. We're taking a look at our mid row captain's chairs. The black, the red, all soft text. Same design as the front. Captain's chairs, armrests, not bad. Could be thicker, but not bad. And in the center, we do have a center console with two cup holders. So overall, though, it's pretty uh, comfortable here in this mid row. And we do have a two, two, three configuration in this Highlander. Getting in row number three of the Highlander, you come to your mid row captain's chair. There's the button right there. You just pull it, the seat moves forward and out of the way. So that's an easy peasy deal. Now, getting in the third row. Oh, look at that. Just black, red accents are gone. We still do have soft tax, but there is cost cutting here in row number three. Two cup holders, no connectivity. Here on the back of this Highlander, knees are fairly high, but I do have enough headroom. If I get behind this one, I have this one set, I guess about in the middle for another full-size adult, and it ain't going to happen. So smaller adults or kids in row number three, but I'm not a fan of what they've done here in the third row. It's a glaring omission once you look at this. Whether you like the red or not, the vibe needs to carry through. Let me know what you think. Getting in the cargo area of your Highlander, you can pop the tailgate from the key fob or from the dash, or you come to the back and right underneath the Toyota badge, there's a button. You hit it, beeps a couple of times, nice electric assist on the way up, nice electric assist on the way down using this button here. Now with the third row up, 16 cubic feet of cargo space, we do have the all-weather cargo liner in here with third row seat back protector. So if we open this up, we can open the floor up. We have our jack, we have some extra storage, but the spare is actually underneath the vehicle behind the bumper. 
So there it is. But it's there, so thank you, Toyota, for that. Here is the uh, subwoofer for this JBL sound system. Now, if you need to get the third row down, that's really easy. You just come in here, lift up on this button, and throw them forward. Wait for the headrest to go down first, though. There you go. And now you got more room. But there's no releases in the Highlander from the tailgate area to drop the mid-row captain's chairs. That's a two-handed -hand, two two-handed operation you have to do from the door, back door of the vehicle. So I'll be back with you and I'll show you how that works. All right, now we're back at the captain's chair. And in order to get it down, it's a two-handed operation, like I said. But button number one here, if you pull this out, you can slide this captain's chair back and forth. So I do like that. But to get this captain's chair down flat, you have to pull on lever number two. And at the same time, the lever that's on top of the seat that we used to get into row number three, pull that and let it down. And that's how it works. And that's how you have to do it. I would like to see Toyota simplify this so you can just pull this and have it drop flat, make it a lot easier or put a release in the back. But we'll do the other side off camera and I'll be back with you at the back end of the vehicle. Now, all seats are down and flat. And what do we have here with the third row and the mid row captain shares down? We have 84.3 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this Highlander XSE. Toyota window sticker, here we go. We'll zoom on in, 24, magnetic gray, safety ratings, fuel economy estimates, standard equipment, options, vehicle MSRP, let's take this baby out for a spin. All right, so we're heading down the road in this 24 Highlander XSE all-wheel drive. Plenty of visibility out the windshield, side glass, side view mirror, rear view mirror, no problem. Blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that safety jazz is in here. We also have the LED headlights and DRLs up front and taillights out back for safety as well. And it drives good. I mean, we've driven a lot of these Highlanders since we've been <clears throat> together here on the channel. and. This 2.4 liter turbo four is just fine. It makes plenty of horsepower to move this vehicle down the road very quickly. It's well damped. It feels good under my, underneath me. The steering's pretty good for an SUV. It's a little vague, but it's an SUV. So that works just fine. So <clears throat> the question becomes, the XSE vibe in here, yes or no? What do you think about these red and black combo soft tech seats? Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Some people do like the red and black look, some people don't. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, we do have the 12.3 inch screen in here. Obviously that is part of that audio upgrade that's in here on the window sticker for a little over $1,300. So I don't know if I would do that myself. Uh, I might as well just stick with the eight inch screen and, and save myself 1300 bucks off the price of the vehicle. Uh, let me know what you guys would do there. And it's well damped. As you can see, we went over that wooden bridge, no problem at all. And now we're going down the road and it feels good underneath me. We got these all season tires with pretty good size sidewalls to soften the bumps up for you. You're gonna get some wind noise, you're gonna get some road noise. There's no two ways about that in this vehicle. It's an SUV. It's gonna be, a, a, you know, you're gonna hear stuff. It's not loud in here but you're gonna hear the outside for sure. 
I do like this faux carbon fiber look on the dash rather than the gloss black, even though you do have some gloss black around your infotainment system. Those are areas of, of the vehicle you're not going to touch. So I don't think that's a big deal. I do like the sunroof. Try out our brakes, hands off the wheel, and it stops nice and straight. And now off we go. And this engine just picks you up and goes. So no problem there. Now we're going to come into this turn. I imagine it's going to be a little wallowy. It is an SUV. But we do have a sport tune suspension. So it's better than one that doesn't have the sport tune suspension. It's the XSE. So they've stiffened it up, made it a little bit more responsive. So I think that's a good deal. But let me know what you guys think. We're looking at a, a price tag of $50,222. A lot of money for an SUV. But reliability of the Highlander is fantastic. This drive line is going to give you hundreds of thousands of miles of trouble-free motoring. And that's what Toyota is relying on to sell this Highlander. So 18.7 foot turning radius. Let's try her out. And it whips right around no problem. That's a good deal. And now down the road we go. And it picks up and goes right down the road. So my overall impressions, I think the Highlander is a really, really good mid-size three-row SUV. I always have. The reliability that Toyota has in the marketplace with this drivetrain is second to none, I would say. Um, but is the XSE trim worth the 50 grand? And that's for you to tell me in the comments what you think. So let me know what you think about this trim in the comments. Or would you go with this XSE trim? Would you go down in trim levels and save some money? Or are you going to go somewhere else with that harder money? Put that in the comments let me know but i do want to thank team toyota of princeton for allowing the channel access to this 2024 toyota highlander xsce all-wheel drive for review today i'd like to thank all of you for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another shabby's rides video and i'll see all of you on the rebound take care everyone